everybody. Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. And I'm also your host, Noel McFoy. That was Asaph Adonai on piano. Mm -hmm. Asaph, what song was that? That is a song called Misty. Nice. That's that was beautiful. beautiful. That was romantic. Song. I was like, God, what a romantic start to our show. This is great. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, if um, you're looking for romance this weekend, it, well, it better be a... Um, it better be on Saturday. better be a um, 80s um, movie starring um, John Cusack because it's raining all week. Ah! <laughs> Get it? Because it rains in all his movies. Anyways, um, yeah. um, so it is currently 45 degrees outside. I, I didn't necessarily feel a sprinkle quite yet, but of course uh, there is a 70% of showers today to up to 80% tonight. So there's going to be um, isolated thunder, no, not thunderstorms, but a lot of different showers and mixtures. Um, Thursday, 90% chance of showers with a high of 47 so things will be pretty much cool all week but luckily for you guys um hopefully you guys have a regular work schedule so you're going to be inside pretty much all week long just mm -hmm. working doing your thing saturday you're going to have a high of 60 it's going to be a cool clear mostly sunny day so that's definitely something to look forward to the weekend but of course it is the work week and of course um if you want to find out more information you can always go to uh the National Weather Service by Googling it. But mm -hmm. you can also Google us or you could um, listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth. And <laughs> <laughs> or that. There's no, like, no nice way of saying that. Listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth. Go Scott, to what are you saying? wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write it out twice. Um, you can go to our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter at Wake up, Missoula. Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook. And to find out more information about MCAT, just go to MCAT.org. Yes, and we do have a lot to talk about on this show. We mm -hmm. have um, Hallmark or Billmark. We have City Council. We have events. And, mm -hmm. of course, ASAP, as always, has musical notes with... I forget that last part. With ASAP. With ASAP. Musical <laughs> notes with ASAP. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be a full show for you guys, so we're just going to get right into it. And we're going to start off with our favorite segment. Hallmark or V-neck. I mean, Bullmark. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have a V-neck on. It's like the only V-neck I own. Trust me, it's only it's the only V-neck. It's nice. Know. It looks good. Yeah, I know because the, like, the Cheshire just kind of burst out. It's like, I'm free. I'm free. It's All right. Ladies. So wait, what were we doing again? <laughs> Hallmark or Bullmark? Oh, whatever. Hallmark. Bullmark. <laughs> Stop. Are you guys ready? <laughs> Are you guys ready to play? So I read a synopsis from a Hallmark original movie, or do I? And you guys have to determine whether it's a real life movie or it's complete hogwash, otherwise known as Bullmark, or if it's real, it's Hallmark. Okay, let's play. Hit it, Asaph. As a hundred years pass since the big earthquake, a small um, California town is celebrating the centennial. <laughs> Liza Connor is head of the planning committee, along with running many other groups in town. Liza is a hard-working event planner, looking to make this event the one that will skyrocket her career to the big city. But her plan gets a big surprise when her longtime crush, Ben Crockett, Ooh. moves back into town. Sparks fly as they begin, begin to work together, but when Liza gets interviewed with a big-time events corporation on the same day as her event, she must decide if looking outside her home is really where the heart is. And the movie's called The Big One. <laughs> is this uh, a Hallmark original movie or is this complete Bullmark? I would say Bullmark. You're gonna yeah, say I'm going Bullmark? I'm to agree because yeah. that name you used yeah. for the character. Uh huh, and it was so long, it seemed like you had a lot of fun writing this. Alright, guys. Are you sure you guys don't want to change it? Yeah, I'm sure. Alright. Um, you guys are right. Yeah. It is, a, it is complete hogwash. <laughs> I knew it. I was like, I bet Scott had a blast writing this. This looks fun. <laughs> it was that name, you know. Ben so. Crockett. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there's been plenty of Ben Crockett's. I'll, I'll have to find a, a Hallmark Ridge movie with a Crockett, and then you'll be like, oh, that's Bullmark. It's like, uh, 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 no way. All right, let's play the next one. Well, now that we know, we'll know that it's going to be Hallmark. <laughs> I just like put my put my hair over here. Oh, that looks nice. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's so sassy. I know. It's uh, the the forehead matches the wave in my hair. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the the beach of my forehead, the wave in my hair. All right. Head, ready, guys? Yep. All right. Hit it, ASAP. Charles McAvery is a down on their luck chef who lost his job at a restaurant he helped form. Now, Chef Charles must find a new job. 
Susie Champs, a small town, a small business owner whose string of bak bakers haven't worked out, and when Charles inquires um, the help wanted sign outside, it's a recipe for success. With Susie's small town charm and Chef Charles' big ideas, the two form a partnership that goes beyond fine dining. Ooh. And its movie is called Baker's Dozen. Is this a Hallmark Origin movie or is this complete hogwash? Hmm. Bullmark. Hmm. Hmm. I think that this is. I think it's a. Oh gosh. I think it's a Hallmark. I'm going to say Bullmark because of the name. That I know. I'm going to change it. I'm going to. Oh, goodness. I don't know, you guys. <laughs> ah! Okay. What do I feel in my gut? Bull Hallmark. <laughs> Hallmark. I'm going to go really Hallmark. You really think so? I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with it. All right. All right. What is it? It is Bullmark. Oh, I knew <laughs> it. Oh, I should have. Oh, I knew it. Uh, Good job, Asa. Thank you. Well, guys, uh, thanks for playing um, Hallmark or Bullmark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't I'm think you can too. say hell on television. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> All right, here's you know. some um, art clips. And when we come back, we'll have um, Noel McAvoy with some events that are happening in your community, our community. A lot of events. Our community. There's a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, your community was just terrible. It's our community. It's our community. Yeah, it's everybody's. All right. <laughs> We are back and we've got some community events. So this is what's going on. Um, today is Wednesday and there are actually, there's a bunch of stuff going on. Mostly there's most of things happening tomorrow. But for today, starting at 10 a.m., we have open hours in the maker space at the Missoula Public Library. Um, so from 10 to 6, you can work on a project of your choice or just go explore. Over at the Children's Museum of Missoula, we've got our rice table that's at 11. Uh, this is the colorful rice table, and you know, it's pretty sensory, it's fun. Rice is fun to sift through and feel. Uh, over at Spectrum Discovery Area, Discovery Bench is Bubbles, and uh, their brain lab is Neurotransmitter Necklaces. And then we are still over the Spectrum Discovery Area, but they have their Science Sprouts, which is a group between for ages three to five, so it's a bit of a younger crowd, and they're going to be reading and learning from Eric Carlyle's book, A Very Hungry Caterpillar. Over at the Public Library, they have got an Android smartphone class in their computer classroom Sweet. from 1230 to 1.30. Finally! So, yeah, so if you've got an Android and you don't know how to use it, you can swing on by and figure out how. Android is like the PC of the phone world. It really is. Um, at the Public Library, they've got an afternoon matinee at 2 p.m. So it's usually a, a classic or recent feature and they're always free. Yeah. University of Montana has got the President's Lecture Series Seminar that starts at 3 p.m. It is going to be, let's see, it's featuring Anthony Romero, who's an Executive Director of American Civil Liberties Union. He's speaking on a conversation with Anthony Romero. Okay, cool. Seminar is free and open to the public. 
Uh, over at Taste Buds Kitchen, they're making edamame dumplings for ages 9 to 13 for only 20 bucks at 4 o'clock. Um, and then at the Northside Kettle House, they've got a cl Climate Smart Missoula. It's their community pint night. So from 5 to 8, 50 cents from each beer sold will go back to them. Oh, at 5.30 here at MCAT, we've got our tour and training. So you come on by. You don't have to pre-register. Come on by and get a tour of MCAT and a training. So then you can come and check out equipment and learn how to edit and do all the things that you want to and make a video. It's pretty awesome. At the Missoula Public Library, they've got a jewelry making workshop in their makerspace from 6 to 7.30. And then we go over to the Zootown Arts Community Center. They've got a glass fusing orientation class that starts at 6. Um, so it's an introductory class that will cover the basics of a fusing glass. It costs $20 plus the cost of glass. So that can either be 15 bucks to 5 bucks, depending on what you want to make. The Lifelong Learning Center has got a class. It's a planning for your overnight float trip. So you're planning a multiple day float trip but I've never done one before. I don't really know what to do or bring. You can attend this class and they'll give you all the knowledge that you need to know. Uh, so that starts at 6 p.m. Great Burn Brewing Company has got a charity pint night for free cycles that starts at 6. Um, and so 50 cents from each beer sold go back, goes back to them. And if you guys know, as you guys know, Free Cycles is trying to raise $1.1 million within the next month so that they can purchase the land that they um, are, have been renting over the past 20 some years that they've been in Missoula. Um, yeah, so I don't really know how much money they've got, but we should check in. We'll check in with them soon and let you guys know. Um, over in the Gallagher Business Building in room 123 is Global Public Health Lecture Series. It starts at 6.30. This is a uh, usually a discussion and a lecture from doctors in the Missoula area that have gone over to third world countries and have come back and they talk about what they've seen. Mm -hmm. It's pretty interesting and we always film it. It's crazy. Yeah. So if you it guys... It all starts with clean water. Yeah. So if you guys don't find it and you've, or if you guys can't go this evening, it'll be on our channel eventually. Um, over at Fact and Fiction, Mark Bodoen is singing, not singing, signing and reading from his book, A Vagabond Song. Ooh. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Are you a vagabond? Um, no. I mean, not really. Because vagabonds are pretty, like, stable. I, I mean, don't, vagabonds just, like, move everywhere, right? Is that what they do? I think so. Let's <laughs> look it up. All right, everyone, we're going to get a vocabulary lesson. Oh, you guys hear that clicking? Okay. <laughs> a person who wanders from place to place without a home or a job. Hmm. No, I'm pretty stable. I mean, there's definitely a lot of vagabonds here in Missoula. There are a ton of vagabonds. Yeah, especially during the Rainbow Festival. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So vagabond <laughs> is a person, that's a nice way of saying, like, you're transient. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, no, I'm not a vagabond. I'm very stable. Yeah. What about you, Scott? I am... <laughs> Opposite of Vagabond. I am anti Vagabond. He's a Vagabond in his own mind. Yep. I got roots coming out of me right now. I can't move from this spot. <laughs> no, no, you <he> can't. <laughs> okay. Um, over at the Public Library, we've got their second Wednesday book, cru book group. Starts at 7, and they'll be reading and discussing Wild from Lost to Found on the Pacific Crest Trail by Cheryl Strayed. And uh, they also made a movie out of this book. Featuring Reese Witherspoon. Okay. At the University of Montana, they've got the President's Lecture Series Lecture. So now this is uh, Anthony Romero. He'll be talking about civil liberties in America today. There is karaoke contest at the Eagles Lodge in Missoula at 8.30. There's karaoke at the Badlander at 9.00. Uh, Milk Crate Wednesdays at the Palace at 9, and there's Rocking Country Karaoke at the Sunrise Saloon also at 9. So that's what's happening in your community um, today. Up next, we've got Musical Notes with ASAP. You know you've arrived when um, you're selected as one of 27 artists in the company with people like Stevie Wonder and Elton John to be featured in a BBC Music first broadcast doing the cover of a 1966 Beach Boys classic called God Only Knows. Isn't that something? And of course, we're talking about Alison Louise Balsam, known to the world as Alison Balsam. Alison Balsam is a British trumpet soloist, 
arranger, producer, music educator, curator, spokesman for the importance of music education. Wow. And if you check out her credentials, she's been a professional trumpet solo classic, uh, classical solo trumpeter since 2001. She's a former BBC, ah, BBC Radio 3 New Generation artist doing classic repertoire for solo trumpet. She released her debut album with e e EMI Classics in 2002. 2005, she released her second disc, Bach Works for the Trumpet, in um, 2006. She won the Young British Classical Performers Award. Isn't that something? Just for playing the trumpet, plus she's hot. <laughs> and also, she's won awards in 2009, 2011, and she just plays all the classic repertoires for the world of the trumpet for those people who are in the trumpet music like the Haydn Trumpet Concerto, the Hamel Trumpet Concerto, and she can turn around and cut loose and play with all the other performers too that I've mentioned. So that's just pretty amazing, um, the accomplishments of this young woman. She also has her doctorate, honorary doctorate degree from the University of Leicester is how that's pronounced I believe and the University of East Anglia. And she's also an honorary fellow of the Guildhall School of Music and Drama. And she started playing the trumpet when she was seven. We can show some of this uh, clip here while I'm narrating because you won't be able to hear it anyway. In this particular clip, see there she is getting ready to perform one of the uh, trumpet concertos, just the Haydn trumpet concerto, the, the first movement. That trumpet concerto has three long movements, so it would probably take about 15, 20 minutes to play the whole, the whole entire concerto. So you have to have a good pair of embouchure chops, as they call it. But anyway, there's not much to say about this lady. She's only um, 34 years old. She's not married, and she's just spent her entire life from the age of seven to current playing the trumpet all around the world. So I think I'll stop on that note right there. Nice. Thanks, Asaph. Sure. Thanks, Asaph. That was cool. <clears throat> all right. We have got an art clip, and we'll be right back after this with Thursday events. <laughs> We're back. Okay, so this is what's going on on Thursday. It's um, it's uh, quite a bit of things. Quite, quite a bit of stuff is happening. Lots of educational things. I'll try That's not to interrupt good. so much. I know. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so at the University of Montana, starting at 8 a.m. tomorrow, uh, they've got a thing called GradCon, where graduate mm. students have the opportunity to present their research to a broader audience. Yeah, so that starts at 8, and I, 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 I don't know much more about it. Just go to the University of Montana website um, and check out their events page, and you'll probably read more about that. Nerds, as to Comic-Con, as yeah. um, college kids, is to GradCon. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the invisible voice of reason. 
<laughs> okay, so <laughs> invisible voice of SATs. SATs. <laughs> Um, and then there is a ecothon today. There are a couple thons going on. So Sussex School is doing an ecothon. There's at 9 a.m. Uh, this is tomorrow. And so ecothon is a day of service that Sussex School students perform for the Missoula community. So their services includes trash picking up, uh, gardening, trail building, support to local nonprofit organizations, and other projects that support our city and its neighborhoods. Um, and so the they also go to these people and family and friends and try to get pledges that are used to support field trips and expeditions for all grades. And so some of the field trips include visits to local farms and wilderness areas, trips to Ravenwood Environmental Learning Center, Yellowstone National Park, Glacier National Park, Teton National Park, and a sailing trip to Puget Sound. So lots of, lots of good work out there, Sussex kids. So give them money so they can learn things. Uh, that's tomorrow, yeah. Uh, also tomorrow, the Providence Center at 10 a.m. is the NAMI Missoula Weekly Meeting. It's the free weekly meeting for anyone affected by mental illness or learning, interested in learning more about NAMI. The Children's Museum of Missoula at 11 has got fizzy painting. Uh, and then also at 11, they have bubble painting. So they've got fizzy painting and bubble painting. That sounds great. Two different kinds. Over at Spectrum Discovery Area, also at 11, their discovery bench is Van de Graaff Generators, and their brain lab is Brain Dissections. Over at NAMI Missoula, they've got their Connection Support Group at 1.30. This is a support group for adults living with mental illness. Missoula Public Library at 3.30 has got their electronics exploration. Uh, you can go in there and work on a project of your choice or just learn how to use their equipment. They have lots of obscure things I've never heard of before, and maybe you haven't either. There is a, the Missoula Fencing Association has a Young Musketeers fencing class for ages six to eight. Um, you can discover your hidden musketeer in this beginning Olympic fe fencing class. That's great. So it meets Thursdays from 3.15 to four for six weeks. You can go to their website, missoulafencing.net to register. At the Missoula Butterfly House, they are observing and drawing uh, from three to five. And so they're honoring Maria Sibilia Marion, which is a 17th and 18th century naturalist who first recorded her discovery of a Goliath bird-eating tarantula. I bet that was terrifying. Um, so they're going to observe and draw Polly, their own Goliath bird-eating tarantula, and they're going to learn about Marion and her contribution to modern understanding of the world of arthropods. That sounds cool. I want to go check that thing out. Missoula Public Library has got their Lego Club from 3.30 to 5, um, and the Lego deep little pieces are provided. And then we head back over to, to the Missoula Insectarium to watch them feed Rosie the Chilean rose hair tarantula at 3.30. At the University Center Gallery, there's an art show. This is pretty cool. It's called Mutually Exclusive. It's um, Carl Scheisau and Krista Ames. And so it's a collaborative exhibition. And so it's kind of, it features like a synthesis of uh, both of their artworks. So you can tell, some, there'll be pieces where you can tell who's is whose. And then there'll also be pieces where they're intertwined and you can't really tell um, whose is whose in that one. And so there, it's kind of like, there, I guess the idea is like always to remain a sense of individualness and independence in every kind of relationship, which is a very, very, very good point and very important to do. Uh, so over at the Florence Hotel lobby tomorrow at 4.30, they've got a Save the Merc informational meeting. So if you want to save the mercantile and want to get involved, uh, here's a chance. So tomorrow at 4, uh, Florence Hotel lobby, 4.30 to 6.30, they're going to have yard signs to sell. They'll be taking petition signatures. Um, if you have questions or just want to learn more, you can check them out. And then the Thursday is the Historic Preservation Commission meeting. So they'll be going over to the City Council Chambers just before 7 o'clock. So you can meet with them and then I'll go over to City Council Chambers and have your uh, voice heard. But if you don't want to do that, you could just go drink some wine at La Grata Bella, the downtown drop and wine tasting from five to seven, I do believe, or it starts at five. So it costs uh, $12.50 and you can pay the Old Post Pub and it's a cavern underneath the Old Post. You can leave whenever they you, kick you out. You can leave whenever, yeah. And then you can go get some tacos. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people do actually. Surprisingly, a lot of, that's how I know it's now $12.50 and not $10. 
because all the old people will go over there and they'll drink and then they'll come over and talk about soul and be like, it's so much fun. You guys should go over there. <laughs> it's a good time. Yeah. All right, back to events. So, um, like we heard from Nikki Robb, uh, that was last week. She, the Seroptimists of Missoula have got their awards banquet and fundraiser at Ruby's Inn and Convention tomorrow at 5. Um, so they give out awards and scholarships to women and girls making a difference in the community. Tickets are $35. They've got auctions. They have raffles. They have scholarships, handouts, and food. I'm pretty sure a sore optimist is considered a pessimist. <laughs> <laughs> Move it <But>, um, <laughs> You should have said that to her. I bet she would have loved that. Uh, yeah, she would have totally loved that. Yeah, she's yeah. funny. She's like, she works with five different organizations. So I she, know, she's she came on our show twice yeah. within like a span of two weeks yeah. to talk about two completely different things. Yeah, she's pretty great. I liked her. Nikki Rab is she's pretty she's, awesome. She's like you in the future. Yeah, I know. That's what I was thinking. I was like, she's great. She's so much fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, we've got our Treasure State Toastmasters. They're going to be meeting at Community Medical Center room, or med Community Medical Center, in their meeting rooms. I never knew where they were, but now it's it's in their meeting rooms. It starts <laughs> at six. I know. Yeah, they never mention it. They just said, "Oh, they're here." Yeah, they never mention it. Um, so it starts at six p.m. And if you guys don't know what Toastmasters is, Toastmasters is a workshop style. Um, it's like a class where you can hone your public speaking skills and increase your confidence and become a better and effective leader. So how it works is that you um, you give a speech on a topic and, and so it's scripted and then you also do an unscripted piece because it's more of like an improvision. And then they give you feedback and give you tell you your strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I think that it's kind of, it's a nice thing to do. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've got some music. Uh, over at Imagination Brewing Company, they've got live music with Night Blooming Jasmine at 6. Local Yoko will be playing at Draftworks Brewing Company at 6 p.m. Captain Wilson's Conspiracy Theory will be playing at Lolo Peak Brewing Company at 6. Um, and then we go to uh, some more classes. We've got Compost Happens at Hellgate Elementary at 6 p.m. So if you want to learn how to compost and don't know how or want to compost and have no idea, you can check out this class tomorrow at 6 at Hellgate Elementary. They'll give you all the ins and outs of composting. And then as we heard from Leah Fitch on Monday, Paper Tigers is screening at the University of Montana Denison Theater tomorrow at 6.30. This is a free event, and it seems to be very interesting. It'd probably be a good idea for you guys to check it out. The Good Food Store has got a Couples in the Kitchen class, hands-on Indian cuisine. Uh, so that starts at 6.30, $35 or $60 per couple. And each couple will prepare one dish, and then they'll all sit down and eat. Yay! Okay, that starts at five four one or call five four one three six six three. It starts at six thirty. Okay, and now we've just got our evening, our evening events for tomorrow. So we have country dance lessons with instructor Kathy Clark at the Sunrise at seven five dollars per lesson. Uh, Congo Sanchez is going to be at stage one twelve at eight. That's at ten dollars tomorrow or seven dollars if you buy your tickets today. Country Boogie Boys will be at the Sunrise Saloon at 8. Open Mic at the Eagles Lodge at 8.30. Dead Hipster at the Badlander at 9. And I do believe it's a special Dead Hipster. It's Farch, who is a, this white rapper from Helena, but he's, he's actually surprisingly really good. He's, just, he's pretty good. He's really, really good, yeah. So it'll be him and Chris Moon, and Chris Moon usually does absolutely on Saturday nights, and he's always a good time, too. So it'll be special Dead Hipster, and it should be pretty fun and pretty packed. So that starts at 9, and then we've got Karaoke at the Dark Horse at 9 p.m. And then Zach Deputy at the Top Out Lounge at 9. And then Di Divers, Wocek, Sunraiser, and VTO will be at the VFW at 9 p.m. Nope. Uh, $7 for that show. So as always, check out MissoulaEvents.net, University of Montana website, uh, the Independent and the Missoulian for all of your community events. I usually go to MissoulaEvents.net to find mine, so you can check out that website to see everything that I've talked about, plus other events that I skimmed over. Because yep. as always, there's lots of different things going on. Yes, and of course, it is time for some city council. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I want to start it off by, uh, there was some public comment, and one of the people, um, this is Michelle uh, Haley, and she's from Mountain Warner Company, and she's um, concerned about an ordinance. Um, ooh, did it just fail on me? Oh! Oh, oh no. Good. It totally did fail on me. Oh, no! Yeah. 
That's okay. Do you have your numbers? I have all my numbers, so I can just skip around, but it'll take me a little bit longer to get through this. Um, <laughs> so bear with us, So everyone. just bear with us a little bit. The first quote is from um, Michelle Haley, and she's from Mountain Water. And let me just quickly find it. Sure. And she is basically speaking in terms of the... Um, oh, no. No, it's not going to happen. I guess it's not going to happen. Oh. Oh, well. Sorry, everyone. Sometimes this happens. The website it, is never... Yeah, the, the never website was perfectly fine this morning, and then they must have switched the uh, codex and whatnot, and it was just... Yeah, it's... I don't know what to say. Okay. Oh. I think this will work. Okay, so okay. thanks for bearing with me. I just wanted to get through this. So, of course, um, this is what she had to say about the uh, transition of what's going to happen um, because the city of Missoula is going to try to um, implement an ordinance which will help the transition of uh, Mountain Water Company from the Carlisle Group into the city of Missoula. And, of course, as an employee, she's not completely happy with um, the um, what's happening with it regarding the Mountain Water employees presented to you in July of last year. Prior to this, the city gave the employees time-limited take-it-or-leave-it offers that left the employees significantly short. The city's plan, as presented to the PSC, has a 32% reduction in wages and benefits. Any claim that a fair offer has been made is simply not true. So the employees presented an offer last July for all of us to come to work for the city under city wages and benefits with a settlement amount to be paid at the time of the city's taking of the water system. I want to make it clear that when I say settlement, it reflects the actual dollars amount to fairly compensate the employees for losses they would incur from having to take new jobs with the city. Much of those losses pertain to losses in pension benefits, retirement, as employees will have to transition from one pension system to another. All right, so basically, mm. she like any any transition with any job, you know, it's a completely new job, and they're basically going from a private um, um, employee to a public yeah, municipality. Yeah. So um, Michelle mm. believes that the city is not prepared to own a water utility in regards to um, comp uh, competing with employee pensions and wages that were provided by the Carlisle beforehand. Um, I, of course, I wanted to bring this up because the city is implementing the ordinance that will reflect the transition of ownership of the Mountain Water Company to a municipality. So the ordinance um, wording is, staff has prepared it the attached ordinance to establish a municipal water utility um, with re related rules and regulations in preparation for the acquisition of mountain water assets staff will present this ordinance for review and discussion on um, March 23rd public works committee meeting of course they done that um, this will be the process of creating a water utility in order to be prepared for Supreme Court ruling later this spring. So the idea is that um, they're going to be a, a, another sport, um, Supreme Court ruling because, of course, Carlisle did sell to Liberty against court order. So the Supreme Court is um, coming in and they're going to be doing a public hearing, which is happening um, a week from this Friday. And we're going to try to live stream it, but don't take my word for it because we've been having trouble with our live streaming um, little box. Mm, yeah. So... Um, of course, uh, let's go to Dale Bickle, which basically kind of explains a little more about the ordinance. So 3610. Okay. So here is Mr. Dale Bickle from the city. Quo um, at, at, um, at initial startup here. Um, adopt the same rates and rate structure um, and adopt the same rules and regulations to the extent possible. Um, with that, city council can make new policy decisions related to the water utility um, through subs subsequent public processes. Um, there are some differences. Um, one, mandatory connection requirements. Well, this is actually in an existing city ordinance, um, in the water quality ordinance, um, but we'd also place it in the um, water utility ordinance. Um, the discount for water for employees would be eliminated. Um, and there is a change to penalties um, that certain rule violations can result in a misdemeanor, though after hearing um, Comments from council um, staff is recommending adding language that uh, that failure to pay or late payments do not constitute a misdemeanor under the under the ordinance. Okay, so um, that 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 particular wording is that that, that what, what a lot of people were really talking about um, in terms of like a lot of the employees from Mountain Water and people who were with the Mountain Water pretty much throughout the whole entire process. Um, uh, this is Ross Miller, and he believes that the ordinance is a way for the city to basically steal land from people. 
Oh, interesting. It's, it's inter it is, um, and I will get that quote ready for you guys in a second. Um, yeah, hmm. I just can't remember the number. And so, huh. Well, we'll hear more from him. I'm intrigued. Have his conspiracy. Uh, oh, man, the public comments in Missoula are really good. This is uh, the public comment for this public hearing, and most of them all were um, with the uh, people from the Mountain Water Company, oh, okay. a lot of employees um, who are, I guess, you know, in a way disgruntled because of the... the well, the, uh, I totally understand. And then uh, I, I can explain exactly later on exactly a little bit of what happened during the trial and condemnation that really definitely... Um, which is why there's a lot of confusion, right, mm -hmm. for in last night's meeting. So this is um, Ross Miller. I've got a few um, uh, issues that I came up with uh, going through the uh, ordinance, the proposed ordinance. Uh, to start out with, uh, watershed trespass. Under section 13.30.510 sub 5 of the ordinance, it says the public may not, quote, trespass upon any watershed belonging to or leased by the municipal water utility or the city. This, we don't know what this means. This could mean that the city can try to lock the public out of the rattlesnake or anywhere else the city considers to be its watershed. Um, next, uh, shared irrigation wells would be a violation. That would also be an unconstitutional property taking. Under ordinance 13.30.200 sub C, Two or more property owners who share an irrigation well would be in violation of the ordinance subject to misdemeanor citation and fine, even if they each had valid water rights to the well and their use predates the ordinance. All right, so that was just a brief quote from him. And, of course, he goes on to talk a little bit more about that. Um, of course, just some background on Mr. Miller. Um, he has been in the, basically, he, I've seen him at every single court hearing for all the trial and all this stuff. And um, he's been against the city condemnation for a while now. So that's just a little bit of background on him. And uh, this is uh, this next person is Shanna Adams, and she is engineer for um, Mountain Water. So, and this is what she had to say about this. A few areas that will be detrimental to our customers. Section 1330190 states that some offenses would result in the customer being, quote, guilty of a misdemeanor, subject to fines of $200 per day every day until the violation is fixed. Having water service shut off and being assessed disconnect and reconnect charges and fees and being ordered to pay restitution to the city. These, quote, offenses include having a leaking service line and a broken curb box. This ordinance would turn hundreds, perhaps thousands, of mountain water customers into criminals overnight. All right, and that's, uh, wow. yeah. <laughs> Man, there's all these things they, they, they didn't think about when they just were like, we just want our water. Okay, and this, um, this next person is Randall Kappas, and he believes that this ordinance would uh, take people's property in five steps rather than in one fell swoop. And this is uh, what he had to say. Let's just get it right there. Ooh, there we go. By ignoring the issue of not increasing tax burdens to pay for this taking of private property, that is what I feel this ordinance is doing. I oppose the passage of this ordinance, and so should the council. Thank you. All right. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of the, some of the quotes I got are fairly short, so I have to. I'm trying to rush through this. Yeah. And this is Michelle Haley once again, and um, this is what she had. I keep on forgetting the number. Uh, fifty-three thirty-eight. Okay. Excellent. Mm. All right, here she is, Michelle Haley. Customers and the employees. While it's true, much of the ordinance simply adopts Mountain Water's existing rules and specs, making me wonder again why you're risking millions of dollars for an already well-run company. There are still significant differences written into the ordinance that are very heavy-handed toward the customer. I'll give you examples of where this ordinance is applied to the customer. will be strict, inflexible, inconvenient, and lacks an overall consideration for customer care and fairness. First of all, we're a service provider and not the police department. There's wording in this ordinance that says a person shall be deemed guilty of a misdemeanor and upon conviction they shall be punished. Up to $200 per day for every day the person is in violation. In addition, there's no external oversight. The council and mayor set the rates, change the rates, and add new fees. The council and mayor set the rules, change the rules, and can make new rules without any neutral third party oversight. The only recourse the customer has is to appear right here in front of you to be judge, jury, and executioner. 
This ordinance is inconvenient. Customers will have to drive down to the city clerk's office during business hours to get copies of their rates, charges, and rules. This ordinance is inflexible. There's no consideration to adjust a customer's water bill regardless of who's at fault. This ordinance oversteps the customer's right to privacy. For example, if a meter fails to register, the city can estimate using a flat rate billing method and charge in advance every month. But the flat rates build based on the number of rooms in the customer's house. We don't have room count information on metered customers. But the city reserves the right in this ordinance to enter the customer's house, violating rights to privacy. Lastly, this ordinance gives a customer only 10 days to pay their bill or their water shut off immediately. If you aren't able to resolve this with the water department, you have to appeal it to the city council. It will be quite embarrassing for a credit customer to have to appear in front of city council and the public to discuss personal financial hardships. Yep, and that's uh, what she had to mm. say. A little bit more about this. And then... Um I think the okay. I have a, I'll just have a couple more quotes. Yeah. Um, um, this is Logan McGinnis, and he's just the chief engineer with uh, Mountain Water Company, and this is what he has to say. Forty nine. Developers to utilize private wells or small systems. Again, your ordinance makes no change in the 40-year refund process, but I think it's pretty safe bet that these refunds will be one of the first things to go away once the city acquires the water system. Mountain Water and its employees consider your adoption of our operating rules and specifications verbatim as an affirmation of how we have managed this system for decades. We also believe that your adoption of our rules proves that the district court made errors in its findings of fact regarding the necessity of public ownership. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, of this course, is interesting. there's there's definitely this trend going on here as well, and I am going to go to Chris Kappas. Uh Wait, wait, wait. Let's 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 just skip ahead. I, I really want to. It's there's just kind of like a um, a definitely a trend go, growing on here, and um, I did want to show uh, the uh, the John Kappas, the um, the president and general manager of Mountain Water Company. But I didn't really need to. I kind of feel like he just kind of repeats everything what everyone else says. Um, so, but I do have um, a dual quote that goes back to back, and this is um, um, Gwen Jones and John Wilson. He's the director of Public Works, which will be basically help regulating the Mountain Water Company. Um, let's see. Okay. But my question, actually, and maybe Mr. Wilson can answer it. Um, is uh, I was looking at the water rates for Mountain Water, which were approved by the PSC, and when you compare our Missoula water rates to the other cities in Montana, I think except for Great Falls, all of the other major cities have a graduated water rate where they're clearly trying to incentivize not using so much water. In that's, other words, that's not but, unusual. In, and Missoula doesn't seem to go in that direction, or if they are, it's not nearly to the extent that these other cities are going in. So on one hand, we want to have this continuity where we adopt as much as possible of Mountain Water's uh, administrative rules to, to set up this transition, but on the other hand, it's nice to understand some of the logic behind it. And do you have any idea why Missoula has not incentivized to nearly the degree saving water that all of these other Montana cities have? Um, no, I don't. Um, you know, because of the litigation, we don't have an opportunity to, to meet and talk about things. And well, we ha we haven't. Uh, there have been a number of them, you know, related to street and construction projects. But communications aren't what I wish they could be. Uh, we would like nothing. Our goal is to have a smooth transition. And uh, this deviates a little bit from your question, but a number of the things raised uh, in the last few minutes. Uh, I would uh, very much have enjoyed ha being able to have a two-way conversation and, and work those things out. Uh, and I, we want to serve the customers and have uh, uh, positive relationships, quality customer service. That's one reason we hope the Mountain employees will come over because uh, they've been doing that. Um, 
you know, a number of these things like the watershed trespass, uh, we certainly didn't make that up. It's in the current rules as well as I know. Uh, a number of these things uh, I believe are in the current rules, but a number of people were working on drafting this new document, so I can't tell you that I know that for a fact. But I will certainly look over the uh, minutes from tonight and uh, pay close attention to those things that are pointed out as contradictions. And if they aren't in the rules today, we'll try to straighten that out. All right. So uh, that was his response to a lot of the um, uh, continuity and um, some of the issues that some of the um, employees of Mountain Water have. So, mm -hmm. okay, this is this is kind of how the uh, system, the Mountain Water Company, remember when I did that little thing where, like, Mountain Water Company's like, I don't want to sell over here. I don't want to go sell over here. And it's yeah. like, you know, they... The, it's 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 like I, I've been following this for like ever. I was there at the trial, uh -huh. heard all this stuff, and there was a huge giant wall between the city of Missoula and Mountain Water Company. Uh -huh. Mountain Water Company did their thing while they let, and they were specifically told not to communicate with anyone from the city privately or publicly. Okay. So I can totally understand why there's a miscommunication between yeah. the two people. It's kind of like um, if somebody if you have. Uh, an owner at I don't know Taco at yeah. Taco, your new owner at Taco, and and it basically tells you, uh, you know what, you've been folding your burritos wrong, and it's like what I've been folding burritos forever, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how it is. It's like an with any transition, it's like you have a new boss. Yeah. And with new bosses, there's always going to be budding heads. Yep. And of course, this ordinance is supposed to reflect. Remember, um, with the whole like parking meter kiosk and stuff they mm -hmm. came up with the emergency ordinance last minute i think they did this as a reaction to their own um yeah, uh, their own buffoonery yeah own <laughs> messed up. Mm -hmm. so i think they're just trying to reflect an ordinance that will help um, perpetuate an easy and smooth transition when um, missoula gets the water company but of course then again it's like uh, it's supreme court is basically going to say listen it's like um it's interesting because uh, Karen Townsend was the one who ruled it says, okay, Missoula can take over the water company. Okay. So so we went over, I guess it's like, um, you know how you always go to your parents, it's like, mom, dad, mm -hmm. we, we this person didn't say they're going to sell to us, but they didn't. And it's like, yeah. oh, you better sell to them. And then they sell to someone else. And it's like, hold on, let me get um, my mother mm -hmm. or my father yep. to deal with this. Yeah. And that's basically how it's working. Okay. That's kind of how I, I've seen it and it kind of how it feels this way but overall the whole lack of communication is based on the whole trial and mm -hmm. the trial is basically saying it's like um, you're not going to talk to the city of Missoula and ever since the whole trial ended now you see all the employees from Mountain Water at public comment Yep. something that they would have never been allowed to do during the condemnation and the trial and the hearing and the uh, water commissioner hearing thing so many different things going on here and this is the first time I've actually seen them on um, the city yeah, council or anything like that. we haven't heard anything from mm -hmm. them for a year. Yeah. But of course, I suggest you watch this full meeting because there's a lot going on. And of course, this whole you know public hearing is for the ordinance, and it didn't get passed. Cause John Wilkins um, said, "Is like, why don't we just put it back to committee? We can get the wording right. We can get better communication with the Mountain Water Company to figure out a way that yeah. works best for everybody." And um, throwing back to what they said before, they were talking about um, how their pension plans and their issues, like take it or leave it option, mm -hmm. um, they basically um, weren't allowed to respond to oh, wow. any like option. It's like, hey, we want to keep you guys on. You know, like basically the city already said, it's like, we're going to keep you on. We're going to try to keep everything the, sa everything the same. Mm -hmm. Was that a text? No, someone texted me? That was weird. That was, was weird. That no one text texts guy? me. I should, I don't know. Did you guys hear that? Uh, yeah, I am. They must that. have. I heard that. <laughs> Sorry I got about a little that. Text. Uh, man, I was just on a roll here. Okay, you but were. You, yeah. it just threw you off. That's funny. Oh, I bet it's his dad. His dad always gets a hold No, my dad room. never texts me. My dad always calls me. Yeah, calls him. Always calls him at the wrong time. Always. Yeah. All the time. But, uh, all right. Anyways, thanks, guys. Um, but that's it for pretty much City Council. If you want to watch the full meeting, you can go to um, ci.missoula.mt.us. You can Google City of Missoula, and you can go to the website. You can find all these meetings and more up-to-date information about what's going on with the city and the whole water ordinance. And you can read the whole water ordinance word for word and exactly what's going on with this. And, of course, they'll be talking about this in public works i don't know if it's gonna to be today or next wednesday yeah. but um sometime yeah. soon but that's pretty much it for uh wake up missoula uh, uh -huh. let's talk a little bit about our website um if you want to find out more about wake up missoula no forget about the city we live in the city and now let's talk about what's <laughs> in about the city how, wake how up you missoula. get your city information yep uh, yeah yep
taped live here in the MCAT studios here in Missoula, Montana. Go to our website, <laughs> wakeupmissoula.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice to meet you. Write it out twice. You can like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. You can like Missoula Community Access Television on Facebook, on Twitter. You can like us on Facebook. And to find out more information about MCAT, go to MCAT.org. And, of course, you can click on this link on our webpage, and you can watch City Council, the latest City Council meetings. You really can, yeah. Woo. But that was a that was a good good yeah. uh, City Council session. Yeah, 15 minutes of, like, quotes, so just kind of, like, stay green, mm -hmm. which is good. I cut out a couple things because there's so much, and there's basically a lot of the repeat where... Um, that everyone's just mad. Everyone's yeah. just... I can imagine. I would be mad, too, if I was an employee and getting all these awesome benefits, and now, like, everything's being taken away. Yeah. I'm just like, Whoa. It's like, um, how am I supposed to wrap burritos without um, tortilla shells? Exactly. Yeah. Kind of like that. Good analogy, Scott. <laughs> yeah. So, I, don't, I, I don't think the um, city of Missoula is taking tortilla shells from Mountain Water Company anytime I don't soon. Think so. No. I, don't think, I so. think they're going to keep all of the tortilla shells exactly the same. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, they and can't a great run analogy. a very good business. Yeah. Now I'm hungry. Uh, thanks for joining <laughs> us, and it's time to go eat some breakfast if you haven't already eaten. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. And for Wake Up Missoula, my name is Noel McAvoy. Here's ASAP Adonai. Mm.